Hello, welcome to today's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Uh, today we're going to try a partial killer Sudoku, uh, which has come in from uh, on our Twitter feed, uh, which is at Cryptic Cracking, for those of you who don't follow us there. Um, and it comes in from somebody with the, the handle Weecock, or however you say that. Um, but I know this is Xavier Surratt, because we've done a couple of his puzzles before. He's a very fine puzzle constructor. And he set me this challenge. He says, this partial killer is quite tough, but there, with an unusual trick in the very start, it becomes way easier. Can you spot it? Now, I'm a sucker for a challenge like this. Um, so, Xavier, you've got me. I'm going to try it. Um, I put it into our software. Uh, where is it? Is it here? Yes. Uh, and I'm going to try and try and do this now. So you can see this is a normal killer Sudoku in a lot of ways. Uh, there's cages here. And those of you who are totally new to the channel may not even know the rules of killer Sudoku, which are the same as normal Sudoku, except you have these cages where these five cells, for example, have to sum up to 29. You can see the 29 in the top left corner. And you mustn't repeat a digit in a cage. So if this was a five, for example, this couldn't be a five. Um, and you can see there's a lot of cages that do have numbers, but these ones some in the middle that don't and as I was typing it in I wondered whether I could spot the trick right off the bat but um, uh, before I sort of go into what I was thinking about um, just to mention if you're again if you're new to cracking the cryptic one of the things we're most proud of on the channel is that you can play the puzzles that feature in our videos so if you want to have a go at this first or even afterwards just click on the link under under the uh, under the video that'll take you to our web page where you can play along um, and with that I'm going to look at this now now the thing I noticed as I was typing this in is that there is a sort of square area in the middle of the grid and if we look outside of this square area every single cell is part of a numbered cage now I wonder whether this matters. Just to say, by the way, that if I hadn't been warned this puzzle had a trick, what would I be looking at off the start? I would look down there that this 16, 16 in two cells must be a 7 and a 9. I can see that's going to make this 12 cage a 4 and an 8, because once we remove the possibilities of 5 and 7, and three and nine, this would have to be four and eight. Uh, and then probably what I'd look at, I'd try and look at geometry. So for example, if we look at those cells there, you can I can see straight away these are adding up to quite a high number. Uh, let's in fact see that's 56. Uh, 82. So these yellow squares add up to 82. But I know that the first two rows of the grid will contain the numbers from 1 to 9 twice, because there'll be a 1 to 9 in this row and 1 to 9 in this row. Now if I add up the numbers from 1 to 9, I get 45. So that means these two rows add up to 90. So we can do a little bit of arithmetic and deduce some interesting thing. So if these yellow cells add up to 82, these cells must add up to 8. And you can immediately see from that that this square here must be a 1 or a 2. Because if it's any bigger, if we made this a 3, these 3 cells would have to sum up to 5. And you can't make 3 cells in the same box add up to less than 6. And obviously the smallest we could make these would be 1, 2 and 3. And that adds up to six. So that's what I'd do if I if I wasn't looking for a trick. But I'm I'm going to go back to looking for the trick because I want to. <laughs> um, now let's look at this. This is going to be a mammoth uh, arithmetical exercise. So I wonder if I should pause and do this, or, or maybe I'll just do it. So 49, 63, 75, 102. Uh, 130, 143, 158, uh, 151, 
179, what's that? 208, 208, 221, 234, 241, 261. Uh, oh, that's not too bad, is it? 290, 306, 318. So these yellow squares add up to 318. Now that was... Right, so... Okay, 318. Now I know if I add up every single number in this grid, I'll have 9 lots of 45. That's 405. So 318... So these squares in the middle of the grid add up to 87. Okay. We've got two cages here. Okay. Ah, right. Okay. So these two squares, or two cages, I should say, add up to 15. This central box would add up to 45. So if I add up all of these yellow squares, I'll get 60. Now that means, I guess, that these squares add up to 27. So I can see Ah, now actually, I was, what I was about to say is that the minimum value I could make four cells in the same row add up to would be 20. Oh, sorry, four cells would be 10. So these two lots of 10s would be 20. So these two squares would have to add up to seven or less. But actually, I think it's more restricted than that. Oh, it's actually, it's very clever. This is lovely, isn't it? What a beautiful idea. Oh, it's, yes, it's absolutely gorgeous, this. So, <laughs> the, the way I had to think about it was looking at the columns. Now, what's the minimum value I could make these two cells, given we've got a 1, 2, and a 4 in the column from the 7 cage? Well, that would be 3 and 5. What's the minimum value I could make these two squares? Well, we know there's going to be a 1, in the eight cage. So the eight cage is either going to be one, two, five, or one, three, four. So these two squares, the minimum value I could make them would be seven, as it's either going to be three plus four or two plus five. Now, the critical thing, I think, is that seven plus eight is 15. Now, we said I had to make these add up to 27. Well, that means I need these six cells to add up to 12. And that is the breakthrough, isn't it? Because therefore, both of these are 1, 2, and 3. That is absolutely gorgeous. What a lovely idea. Um, now, I've got to be a bit careful. I don't actually know this is... I don't yet know whether this is 1, 2, 5 or 1, 3, 4. Oh, except I do, because if this is 1, 2, 5, look what happens. This would have to be 3, 4, and you can see that now this is broken, this row. Uh, I've got too many of the same digits in five different squares. So in fact, this is not 1, 2, 5. This is 1, 3, 4. This is 2 and 5, therefore this one is a 5, because we know there'll be a 2 in there. In fact, this must be a 4 for the same reason. This is a 2. Uh, that must be a 5, therefore this is a 3, therefore this is a 3, because look, this is all part of the same uh, cage. In other words, these two squares can't be 3. Similarly, these two squares can't be 2. Therefore this one is a 1, this is a 3, this is a 2. 2, 1. Um, this must be a 3, because We've got two threes in the rows already. That must be a one. That's a four. This is a two. This is a one. What a lovely, lovely idea. And all of a sudden, 
we're in better shape, aren't we? So now what can we do next? Um, one, 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 one. So this middle square is a one. Presumably we're going to be able to isolate some more things here. This has got to be a two. This has got to be a three. Fours. Uh, we don't. Well, one of those two squares has got to be a four. Ah, now that's that is nice because if you remember at the very start we looked at these squares and we said these four digits had to add up to eight. Well, if one of them is a four, we've got serious restrictions going on. The minimum I could make these three squares add up to would be seven. Four plus one plus two. So this must be a one. And this must in fact be four, one and two. That's not a four. And that's not a one. Uh, these add up to seven. So these two squares add up to 13. And we can't use four, nine, and we can't use five, eight. So these two squares are six and seven. The seven, nine here resolves the order. These two squares over here must be nine and six. Oopsie. Uh, 16 these have to add up to 12 uh, still 4 8 or 5 7 is possible there ah but look this 6 9 fixes this 15 cage it can't be 6 and 9 anymore so it must be 7 and 8 therefore this 13 cage must be 4 and 9 and we can see the ordering there we go so uh, 6 this had to add to 12, didn't it? So this is now 5 and 7. And all of a sudden we're flying through the puzzle. That must be a 6. Um, so there's a 6 here, because in this row there's only one place a 6 can actually go legitimately now. This must be an 8, therefore, and this is a 9. These two squares have got to be 5 and 8, which we can resolve the order of. 13 plus 15 is 28, so that's a 1. That means that's a 2, that's a 4, and that's a 1. Uh, these squares here must be 3, 6, and 9. We can do some labelling like that. Uh, 3, 6, and 9 add to 18. So these two squares have got to add up to 11 without using 3, 8. 2, 9, or 5, 6. So these two squares are 4 and 7. Mm. Still 6, 8 is possible there. Not quite seeing how to rule that out. Oh, I know what I could... Ah, no, that's not going to be useful. I was about to use the geometry on the bottom, but the one here, actually. Let's just see what these add up to. Uh, 27, 40, 53, uh, oh, 82 again, same as the top. So these add up to 7 as well. So this is 1, 2, and 4. Okay, now the 1's here and here mean that's the 1. That must be a 4, that must be a 2, and that's because of the 4 up there. Uh, this must be a 2 now. Yeah, that looks okay, doesn't it? This is a three. Um, so this is three, six, and nine. Therefore, that's a three. This is a six, nine pair. Again, we've got 18 here. So again, we've got 11 here. Uh, and again, this must be four, seven. Lovely symmetry going on. That 4-7 is very powerful in terms of the 13 cage because that's going to force the 13 cage to be 5-8. Um, that means this is 6 and 7, which resolves the 9. 9, 6 here. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So this along here must be 5, 8, 9. You can see that's a 9, 5, 8, 6. Oops, six, seven. Um, let's just check the rest of this. We can obviously fill in the value of that square. That must be a five. 
these two squares here have got to be 2 and 3, which is now resolvable. These two squares have got to be 7 and 8, which is is resolvable because this can't be an 8. This 12 cage would break them because of the 4. So that's a 7, that's a 5. This is an 8. This must be 6 and 8, which is resolvable. The 4, 7 pair in column 5 there. Uh, the 20... Yeah, the 27 cage we're going to be able to sort out. 10, 18, that's a 9. That resolves the 9 and the 6. And what next? Let's have a look along here. Uh, 4, 7 and 9. So that's got to be a 4 or a 9. Ah, that one's good, isn't it? Because the 4, 7 pair there. So this is in fact a 9. That's the only option. So that resolves the 9 and the 7. That resolves this 4 and 7, which resolves this 4, 7. 5 and 8 is resolvable. This should be a 6, I think. Yeah, that looks like it's working. So 5, 7 and 8 into the open positions. 8. You can see, oh, that's lovely. What a lovely finale, like a flourish at the end. Look at these this pair. Ordinarily, you might look at this and say, broken puzzle, two solutions, but it's not because of this five. You can see this cage here. You can't repeat a digit in a cage, so that forces this to be a seven, which resolves the seven and the five. Check. Oh, what a lovely, lovely puzzle. Stunning. Xavier really enjoyed that. Started off with something novel. I've not seen... Um, whatever you call that technique at the start before. I've never had to add up so high in a killer Sudoku. And then um, beautiful solve throughout. Do let me know whether you enjoyed it. Look, always look forward to the comments on these puzzles. We're, it's a real treat for us. You know, this, this puzzle probably wouldn't have existed and certainly wouldn't have had the audience without this channel. And to showcase puzzles like this that are made for us is an absolute pleasure. So thanks very much for watching and we'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.